Thanks for watching. All right. So because people really demand it, I'm going to do a few more Theranos videos. And I actually have like five or six planned. This one is going to be a little short one, a little fun one. So as you know, there were text messages between Sunny and Elizabeth Holmes. And from what I read, there were 12,000 messages, 600 pages in documents. Unfortunately, they're not public, so I couldn't find them. So they apparently have been sent... I believe to some media companies, or maybe they've just been read in court, I don't know, but they exist, they aren't there. I even went to WikiLeaks to check if they're there, but they weren't. So what I did is I scavenged the internet, looked through whatever I could find on the text messages, and I just copy pasted all of them, all the ones that were kind of public that I could find, and I am going to go through them. Some are going to be a little bit cringy. You probably already heard or saw, quite a few of them. Okay, everything in pink is going to be Elizabeth Holmes. Everything in blue is going to be Sunny Bawani. So let's start. Oh my God. I think some of them are going to be, some of them are going to be really cringy. Oh, Jesus. I, I can't even read them. <laughs> Worst thinking about you this morning. Oh, this is, imagine your whole private text messages are going to be public. I've started using Signal. I made a video I think I actually took it down, I remember. But I made a video on WhatsApp and Signal because I kind of had a sense that WhatsApp was... I mean, they are they are scanning your messages for ad content. So they're trying to give you more ad content. They look for keywords in your messages. This is insane. So I went to Signal. I don't know how safe Signal is, but from my research, it seems to be the safest one around, or at least one of the safest ones around, as safe as your smartphone is, obviously. But yeah, imagine all of your messages coming out. This is ridiculous. Okay, I was thinking I was thinking about you this morning. Yeah, need to be focused, vigilant. I can't read them. We are lazy and disorganized. Lab is a fucking disaster zone. Here, yeah, Wall Street Journal guy might show up. This is really funny. This was the article that came out, I think, 2015. Uh, this was the first scandal with Theranos. It's interesting that, that yeah, I mean, obviously, this is what they talk about. Now Elizabeth Holmes is going to be really cringy. I find this interesting because I thought when I think of Elizabeth Holmes, I actually think of her of the man in any relationship. Obviously, she has a deep voice, but I think of her as being very self-sufficient and stoic, not as someone who would emotionally, you know, like public display of affection, emotionally overexpress or express at all. She doesn't seem like the person who would... Yeah, like even be romantic, poetic. This this doesn't, she doesn't seem like the person, like someone who looks like for perfect energy. You are the breeze in the desert, my water, my ocean. But just for fun, I also kind of sometimes feel like maybe she is just a complete dick to Sonny and she's completely mean towards him. And then just to mess with them, she sends him like really sweet messages, which is why he doesn't respond. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know. M maybe, maybe she's just romantic. Maybe she just really likes to talk about stuff like that. You are the breeze in the desert. You are my water, my ocean. Meant to only be together. Tiger. This is so ridiculous. It's so funny. I mean, Sunny, Sunny and Tiger. Oh, Jesus. Madly in love with you and your strength. Hmm. All right, let's assume she's saying the truth. Maddie in love. She sees him as a very strong person, which I can honestly see because he clearly has a strong frame. Like he clearly seems like someone who doesn't fold, which is, I guess, uh, a good quality. We don't have to be too negative. Everybody has positive qualities, no matter who. On route to dinner, missing you, missing... Oh, Jesus. Okay. Maybe I should just quietly scroll. Just quietly... Oh. Why is she texting this? Why is she making my life so difficult? Okay, need to focus. Now we go into it. Need to focus on operations, getting hurt in market. Which market? How are you getting? I'm okay. They had Walgreens, whatever. So, okay, getting hurt in Walkmart. Customer service seems to be terrible. So here's the thing. Customer service should be a fraction of what you do. Product development should be the majority. If your product development is really, really bad then the customer service is going to have to shoulder a ridiculous burden. So obviously, if the tests don't work, the customer service is going to be horrible. What do you expect? If the customer has to say, sorry, we are really bad, then this is bad customer service. So you can't lean on them. Everyone complaining doesn't seem like a customer support issue. 
Yes, we have to own this. Yeah. Mm. We built software to remove human error and human judgment. All day I saw these people use their judgment to work around our processes. Yeah, which processes? It's most maddening. There's no focus in any chem teams and in any chem teams and no product coming out. Yeah, so here's the thing. I have much more respect for someone like Elon Musk, who at least knows why things don't work. So if there's some engineering issue, he's aware of it and he's trying to fix that. But you rarely hear him talk about, yeah, the production doesn't work and I don't know why, or the production doesn't work, the people aren't doing their job. It's more in the sense of, yeah, the production doesn't work because we can't seem to solve this problem, or this problem is more tricky than we thought it would be. But in their case, it sounds like he doesn't know why it doesn't work. And she probably also doesn't. He doesn't know why it doesn't work because he isn't a technical person in that sense. He's like coming, I believe, from the programming industry and whatever. But he's not a technical person in that aspect, so he doesn't know. But if you don't know what the problem is, you don't know the right instructions, or you can't say, hey, do your job better. This is not leadership. This doesn't work. You have to lead from the front lines, meaning... If people have a problem, they can't solve it. You have to ask as many questions as you can until you understand the problem and then you can help give a solution. If he can't do that, then obviously, obviously it's not going to work. Yeah, she just says, I know, which is hilarious. So I would like to see the whole messages because I wonder if there's more context they removed. So I just have these messages, which is kind of annoying, but whatever. Then, okay, now they talk about the whistleblowers. So obviously they had these two whistleblowers. It was, I think, Erica Chung and, and now I forgot his name, Schultz. George Schultz was the board member. Then, yeah, Schultz, going to put in the name here. So they didn't know who it was. They didn't know who the whistleblower was. And there were more than them. It wasn't just the two. But yeah, they actually try to figure out who it was uh, trying to nail down this yeah you know what he means so wrong focus why are they focusing on the whistleblower rather than on what the issue is why are they focusing on who it is focus on the content and not on the messenger of course they have legal grounds i mean they have ndas anyway this this is always tough ndas are a funny thing because there are bad NDAs. There are NDAs that don't defy confidential information. Maybe they're signed by a person rather than a company. There are so many mistakes you can make with NDAs. So enforcing NDAs can be really tricky. I would imagine that their NDAs are really solid. I would imagine that their NDAs are really, really solid. But the only option they have is really to sue someone out of oblivion, which they try to do with Schultz, who, who, who was one of the main whistleblowers. Obviously, he had, luckily, he had enough financing. So his parents actually put in like 400K. They had to put in 400K just for the legal costs. And they won in the end. But yeah, I mean, this is a lot of money that most people don't have. I mean, any NDA, even, and this is the critical part, even if you're not infringing on anything, you can still be in a position where you are losing because you don't have enough legal costs. So I would actually recommend anyone be very careful about signing any NDA. If this is an NDA with someone that you really want to get into business with and you're really interested in that, then sign the NDA. If this is someone or company where you think, I probably don't want to work with them anyway. I, I'm pretty, I'm like 60%, 70% sure I'm not going to work with them. Then don't sign the NDA if you already know, because every NDA you have signed is going to be for you a liability. So only sign NDA when you're like 80% sure that you want to engage with them at all. If they are, keep asking you to sign NDA uh, just to tell you something, but you're pretty sure you don't want to work with them, just don't sign it. Say, no, thank you. And then that's it. So be very careful about NDAs. Yeah, we're back to cringe. Feel like the luckiest person in the world because I have you. Do you use a lot of abbreviations? I never use them. The only abbreviation I would actually use is WTF and what was the other one? And, B, uh, and, and by the way, so BTW. I don't use the U. I don't use the BC. I don't use any abbreviations. Like I'm doing a lot of writing, so I really like writing. So that's probably the reason. But yeah, it's kind of funny to see the way they, they text. Actually, Sunny also uses very few. Elizabeth Holmes is kind of really into abbreviations. All right, next one. Jesus. Okay, we got right into the cringe. We are in cringe city. Love transcend. We were on board. Love 
taking off, baby. Missing you, missing you too, baby. Just arrived at the office, we'll prepare. Ooh, XXX, yeah. I also never use XXX, I mean, Jesus. I use that in writing if I leave a placeholder, if I'm not sure, like XXX euros. Um, yeah, this is the cringy thing that everybody talked about or that was in a lot of, this was like frontline center. My new life as of this night and forevermore, total confidence in myself, best business person of the year. It's funny to talk about business person. I know people who talk about business as if it was like this abstract thing. Oh, I'm launching my business. Oh, I'm really good at business. Oh, I have business skills. I always feel like this is such a weird way to put it. Because I feel like there's no such thing as being good at business. You are good at a certain industry. You you have knowledge in that industry. You know how to operate a SaaS business. Like I'm really good at SaaS businesses because I really understand how to retain users, how to tweak the product, uh, like all of the metrics I have to keep track on. But maybe this person is really going to suck at a product business, like really bad at that. So whenever I hear someone talk about business, best business person, I have business expertise, I, for example, I view myself as a consultant mainly, like this is how, how I would present myself, but I'm a very in a very certain niche. Like I'm not this type of consultant. I'm not a consultant who talks all day. I'm actually more of a consultant who's doing a lot of writing, focusing on fundraising and stuff like that. So I'm focusing on these things, but I wouldn't say I'm an expert consultant at all because 99% of what a consultant does, like on a global scale, I probably don't do. I focus on a very particular niche, things I'm particularly good at. So yeah, total confidence in myself, best business person of the year. Focus, details, excellence. Don't give what anyone thinks. I guess this means don't give an F, I don't know. Don't give what anyone thinks. Engage employees and meetings by stories. I believe that. I mean, she did that. By the way, I'm going to have another video on Elizabeth Holmes and Sunny Bawani from the HBO documentary. There was this internal footage of them giving like these internal employee conferences or seminars. So I actually cut them together and I want to do a video on them too because they're also kind of cringy. She's kind of cringy if you think about it. So when she just talks... It's kind of boring because she keeps talking, but not really saying anything. She talks about the vision, but she doesn't talk about specifics, about the business model, the customer, blah, blah. So this is kind of boring. But then again, she also is cringy when she talks about herself. And then she becomes really cringy. And she becomes really, really cringy when she talks about her breeze in the ocean or her breeze in the desert and the water in the ocean. Yeah, make it about them. Yeah, this is, I mean, okay, you can't blame them. If you look at the text messages of Jeff Bezos or whatever, Tim Cook, like big CEOs, then, or ex-CEOs, because Jeff Bezos is up there. But yeah, but if you look at them, you're going to have really cringy ones. I mean, you had a dick pic of Jeff Bezos, so you can't talk about cringe. Uh, so there's always cringe. If you look at all my text messages, there are probably going to be some really bad jokes in there and some really... Uh, cring no, probably not cringy, but probably some really bad jokes. I'm, I'm really bad with jokes sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I put dot, dot, dot because he didn't respond. No response. Oh, and here's Sunny with the abbreviations. Why do people do that? Probably everyone does it except for me. I never use abbreviations. But I'm into emojis. They're kind of fun. Awesome. You're listening and paying attention. Yeah, just for an call. Okay, these, these are investors. Ellis Walton for 50, 50 millions. Um, and I think it was higher then. They kind of ended up investing with 150 million or whatever. So she got a good amount there. Um, yeah, these are just these daily insights. I can totally see where this text message comes from. They're not investing in our company. They're investing in our destiny. This is kind of like a thing people think about. You You brush your teeth and then you have like this thought and you kind of think it's smart or whatever. In this case, obviously, it's super cringy, but you can see where it comes from. Rupert Murdoch put money. I think Rupert then ended up 150 million. Yeah, can learn more about that conversation where, yeah, he would have met longer. This is so funny. This is like, um, this is like a teenager bragging. Oh, I met this, this guy or girl. And oh, yeah, I had to go. But they would have stayed longer. It's kind of funny. He would have met longer as if this is a great thing. He was so interested, so hooked. It's kind of, kind of a juvenile thing to say. 
I feel so sorry for them. I actually feel sorry for them for having the text messages read out in court. There's this funny bit by Matt TV where this guy is in court and then they're reading the messages of him and it's like he's texting a girl at 11. Hey, what, what are you up to tonight? Texting again at one in the morning. Hey, you didn't respond. What's going on? Texting again at two in the morning. Hey, I'm outside your door. Like really creepy stuff. And he sits there and the lawyers are reading the stuff. So this is can get really embarrassing with these. Yeah. And then asking them to stay private and just keep raising, keep raising. We don't know when it is. So I think this probably 2015. I don't know when exactly that was, but this is kind of what they went. They say private and they just raised a ridiculous amount of money. Yeah, then they had this Vegas trip, so they kind of had a, had a holiday trip, but then the Wall Street Journal article came out, so they had no time, so this was really bad timing. They ended up going anyway, but then they kind of started focusing on their own stuff, and um, I guess they, 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 they didn't really engage too much with the people there. So this was a family thing. I think they had, like, whatever, like cousins, brother, whatever. Yeah, just talking a little bit of buying stuff and then getting getting the flights and stuff like that. And then they got a table at some party dance floor. Ooh, good ending. Getting private security for her. And she is like asking, yeah, I want dedicated security guys. Yeah, she definitely needed that. I mean, obviously, you don't. I wonder how many celebrities don't care. There are these images of Keanu Reeves basically just being being in the in the in the in the subway, but there's a limit to what you can do because there are crazy people. Even if you're a normal person, you walk around, there, there can always be crazy people. If you're Keanu Reeves or you're Elizabeth Holmes, you want to have security because there are going to be some really crazy people that just want to shout at you, punch you, hit you, just maybe have the little moment of fame. Yes, I hope this wasn't too cringy. I hope this was entertaining. These were all the messages I could find. Um, yeah, if you find any more that I didn't find, just send me the link and I'm going to dig them up. Otherwise, yeah, that's pretty much it. See you in the next one. Mm -hmm.